Greetings all, my name is Willow. Uh, some of you may know me as Vampire Boise on Nuvera Online. Please, I apologize for any uh, clearing of the throat. <laughs> I have a bit of a cold. <clears throat> okay, today we're going to be working on uh, painting clothing. So you want to start by going to shop at the top here and choosing what's new and it'll bring you to this page. Then click on clothing. Now I'm basing this on a dress so for the gentlemen out there watching this you can choose whatever item works for you. You want to click on over here where you see filters, show only inheritable and hit apply. And then over here in the left hand menu female dresses. Okay, so I chose to work with the White Sequin Backless by Mayaka 618. And the reason I chose this one is because it has two uh, dress layers plus the panty, so I can show you a few additional options with this. Uh, the first thing you need to take note of is this, the 6720. The ID of the product that you're going to be working with is very important. You're going to need it in the editor. Okay, the next thing you're going to need is the maps. Now, of course, you can grab these uh, from whichever way you find easiest, but for myself, right-clicking the thumbnail and going to Save Link As automatically saves the full-size image. Uh, there's no conflict with browsers or anything like that. It just works every time. Now, I use um, Chrome for my option, so it, the save link as may come up as something different on your browser. Uh, just check for it. I'm sure it'll come out pretty much the same. Grab both of these maps, go to your graphics program, and once you're finished doing some texture work on it, uh, you can bring it into the editor. Now keep in mind we work with PNGs for your opacity and transparencies. So if uh, you want an area that's cut out or anything like that, make sure that you put a null background there or if you want to do sheer you're going to want to work with uh, alpha channels. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Okay so again remember to, uh, 6720 grab your maps and then you might want to pause the video while you go and work on the maps to uh, bring them into the editor. With the launcher open you're going to want to click on editor which is the second button here. Ignore this one here, that's only for testers. You probably don't even see that on your launcher. <clears throat> Excuse me. Click on Launch Editor. I am assuming that you've already installed it. Uh, if you haven't, you're going to need to do that. You might want to pause the video again. It may take a moment, depending on your system, to get this to load correctly. Uh, unfortunately, the system I'm on right now is a little bit slow on the loading, but, you know, no worries. Okay, if you haven't been into the editor before, you've got three different sections here. The environments, objects, and avatars. Anything under create in these rows here, that's specific to importing models. If you're not importing the model, ignore these. If you're just retexturing models that are already in the catalog, you want to follow the ones under paint. So today we're doing clothing, so that's what we're going to click on. Now there is, let me adjust this here so that you get the full screen. There we go. All right, uh, there's a couple of things to know about these buttons here. New product, of course, is to start a new project. Uh, load product allows you to import uh, a product from your catalog that you've already submitted or from your computer that you saved as a project. I'll go over how that works in a little bit. So click on new product. Now remember I asked you to remember a number. Uh, click up here and insert that number right here 6720 and then click load. there we go. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit. 
Now notice that there is no texture on here even though Mayaka's dress had the sparkles and everything else and she had opacity out a nice design. Um, all textures are stripped off for painters. You must start from scratch. Plain and simple. The textures that are on the base products are for uh, the creators only. The textures will be stripped off of all other products. So you must start from the beginning as I mentioned. The first thing you want to check is the stats. The stats on a model uh, are extremely important. If they start reaching into this yellow area here, they're probably going to cause lag, especially if you have more than one item in that area. Those, The ones in the yellow tend to uh, pass review barely. Um, anything in the red will not pass review. If you come across something in the red, it probably was grandfathered in from prior to us adding the stats option. So if you see something in the yellow, you may want to talk to the developer and see if they can optimize their product somehow. Uh, most times they're more than willing to try and work with you. Okay, so once you determine that it is safe to work with this model, you can come up here and check the clothing for various clipping. Now you can switch from uh, idle to walk and notice there's quite a lot of clipping there to run and then to flex test. Now uh, once you've gone over these I'm gonna just blow through this pretty fast so you want to maybe spend a little more time if you're unfamiliar with the model itself but you can see where the clipping is happening here. <clears throat> All right I, I again I apologize I do have a cold so I'm going to be clearing my voice uh, a few times. Okay so we want to start at edit model. When you mouse over the thumbnails uh, slots you'll note that pieces turn yellow that's to identify what area you're affecting with that particular texture this works for all models in Nuvo so a really good idea is to mouse over figure out where each p part is and then you have a better idea of what you're affecting and what you want to put there uh, this bottom one is the top layer I want to start with that one because I want to be able to see the under piece as well uh, once you open the file browser, you can choose the drive that you want to use. Um, there's also a, a save option for your files, so new shortcut. You can create a shortcut once you find the folder that you're looking for. And once you have a shortcut, you can quick click and look at that. We're right to the folder where I want to work. So uh, very easy to do. Once you have it set, it's always there for you. The top layer I have set is Opera Sparkles. Notice again it's PNG. There's an opacity in here. You can see the background behind the image. Um, and that's going to allow me to see what's going on with the rest of the dress. And there we go. Now it's still not completely set because this is actually supposed to be a lace layer, but we'll deal with that in a minute. So I'm going to add the panties so that she's covered and the bottom layer. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, first off, we want to make sure this is two-sided and set to opacity. And now you can see the actual lace layer. Uh, there is some additional options that you can check in here for solid color that uh, offers you a single texture option. There is no opacity or transparency allowed on this layer. Same with simple. You can make uh, change the tint colors on these though, as you can see very quickly. You can change the tint color to anything you want. Um, it makes for a really quick and easy uh, single texture options, like for a t-shirt with maybe an applique over top. Uh, I believe Mayaka has that in her catalog. Uh, you can change the applique and or put one applique and then just change the color in the background for the t-shirt itself and that makes it a very simple thing to do. Simple does show your texture however does not show 
uh, opacity and uh, transparencies. So you want to be cautious which one of these you're using. Another quick one is shiny, as you can see, very, very shiny, but again, no transparency or opacity. So this is good for solid pieces only. Um, and then uh, opacity I already showed you. Let's go over glass. Glass is a really cool thing, not recommended for everything. It can be hard on some systems to show, so I highly recommend using it very sparingly, but it's great for doing actual glass on buildings, vases, that kind of thing. Uh, hologram is a really cool effect. However, again, not all uh, computers are equal, so some systems may find this really hard to uh, register. Um, let's go back. This one's supposed to be opacity on here. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is the shiny color. Uh, because Mayaka had uh, sparkles on hers, she had it set to shiny on that layer. I do not want shiny on my lace, so I take this all the way down to black and it turns the shininess off. Okay, and the emission color, emissions allow you to set things uh, to different colors. As you can see on the lace there, if you look at that while I'm changing colors, and the emissions give kind of a, a light hue in regular light, but in the dark, they actually glow in the dark. So that's a really good option for those that want to do like rave clothes and that kind of thing. Uh, I do not want to, however, so I'm going to turn this to black as well. <clears throat> I'm sorry, to white as well. Uh, so emission color white and shiny color black and that leaves everything the way it's supposed to be. So we'll turn that off. Now I want to check the texture settings here. Now I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, uh, two-sided it should be on all clothing and all hair. This really helps with the clipping issue. Uh, in this case I want this bottom piece to be a cutout so that it does not conflict with the opacity layer on top. Those of you that have been in uh, different virtual worlds and virtual chat programs are well aware of that dual opacity issue. If you put cutout underneath, you will not have the dual opacity issue. Um, it's not necessary if you look uh, at a little closer. These are straight lines essentially, so it's really not, a, not necessary to have an opacity layer. Cutout uh, does exactly that. It just cuts out where you have the null background. So again, you can change the tint color, you can change the texture tiling, um, you can use animated textures. Uh, emission color, I'm going to want to uh, save to black and make sure it's all the way down. Uh, you can change your emission color if you know the RGB of the color that you're using. This is really helpful if you're doing sets and you want them all to be the same color. You can set the RGB yourself and then it's uh, good to go and they should all match up. Okay, so we're finished with that part. You've got a familiarity with what things do now. So we're going to edit the skin mask. Now this is the part that saves you uh, from the clipping issue. And we all hate the clipping. Uh, notice how small this is. This is a 256 by 256. And depending on your computer and what settings you have the editor at, this may be just fine for you. For a lot of people, they said it wasn't and they wanted something bigger, so we made a double version. This one's 512 by 512. Now, you can adjust the brush size uh, down here and it will determine how big the, the pointer brush is. And see, it can get quite large. Um, I usually keep it wherever the default is. You can also change it from square to round. And you can also use the uh, eraser tool. Oh, I foobarred this here a little bit. Okay, let me just get back here. There we go. Sometimes uh, my computer just doesn't want to play nice. Anyways, the eraser tool allows you to erase things. Now, when you start a project like this and the developer has already set a skin mask, a faster way to clean that up is to just 
remove it. So the red button here removes the skin mask and you can start fresh. So I'm going to uh, switch that back and what you want to do, oh, there we go, um, is hit these corners here. Now one of the major areas every time when it comes to uh, clothing products always seems to be the seams, the shoulders, the hips, and the knees and the elbows, those area. Now the elbows I'm not too worried about, but if I accidentally uh, erase an area that I didn't intend to, I simply have to go in and clean it up. So back to the brush. Now the next area I want to affect is the knees and the hips. Whoops. Like I said, my computer hasn't been playing nice today. It's already crashed twice. So um, we'll just fill this in real quick. Don't worry about hitting other areas outside. Like this is a dress, so uh, with it being a dress, it's only affecting the from the neck to the ankles. So if I hit the feet or the hands, it's not going to affect it. These areas are specific to those uh, areas. So uh, if it was gloves, this would affect the gloves. If this was shoes or socks or something like that, then it, that would affect it. It has no bearing on it at all. It'll only affect these areas where uh, from the neck to the wrists and then to the ankles. All right, so we got our skin mask on and I did note there was one small area right in here on both sides uh, that was affected and kind of poking through. So I want to kind of clean those up too. All right, we'll close the skin mask, center her again, and let's see how she looks with the walk and run now. Notice a lot less clipping. Now the bottom part I'm not too worried about because that's pretty much a given. I've never been in a virtual world uh, where some area wasn't clipping a little bit, especially when you've got multiple t layers uh, occurring. But notice shoulders are just fine. The clipping area over here is just fine and not a spot from here up is affected at all. So it looks a lot cleaner. And this stretch test is just fantastic. It was offered to us from Mallard. He's a uh, developer on several virtual worlds, virtual chat programs, and also the co-author of our theme song, uh, Walking in Nuvera. Look it up. It's a good song. <laughs> All right. So we're going to put her back to idle and head over here. Under snapshots you can take a picture of it if you just want to do a thumbnail photo. Um, I highly recommend if you really want to get good photos take it in world and take some good photos there. You can change the skin, put your hair on and everything else. Now these buttons up here are the standard default background colors. You can alter them uh, and those are always there. If you want to do a custom color choose one of the color palettes on the wheels and you can just pick a color that you like and hit accept and that color will always be available to you whenever you come back to the editor. These three areas here you don't really need to worry about that's more for people who are importing models but we just have it there as a standard feature. The snapshot option is quick and simple saves everything in PNG so you click on the camera and voila, your picture has been taken. You can just open up the browser by clicking on the snapshots folder and ta-da! There you go, snapshots right there. So we'll close that for now. Uh, you do need to convert them to JPEG and of course resize them for what the site allows. Your uh, photos are maximum 512 by 512. The thumbnail must be 100 by 80 and both must be in JPEG format. Uh, remember me mentioning the save project op option? Here if you need to stop in the middle of a project for whatever reason, and we all have those reasons, uh, just name it, 
hit save and when you come back you hit load product and then from my computer and that will bring up your uh, saved projects list which is super handy okay and then the submit option so while we're submitting we start with a good identifier this way all my products come up as VB and when you're looking in your inventory if you have more than one of my items they'll always be together it's very handy to consider that for your uh, your clientele uh, opera gown uh, I like to put an identifier of what product it is because I may choose to do opera gloves and opera shoes you know whatever and if that's the case it comes up as a nice collection as well in the catalog um, make sure that the name is appropriate for the product I mean I wouldn't want to name this a chair or something like that right because that's not what it is anyways um, under category browser uh, which is the three buttons at the end here you want to make sure that you're selecting the correct category for your product as well this is under dresses long gowns obviously I'm not going to pick mini it is not a mini dress it's also not strapless or a sundress or anything like that so make sure you are uh, picking the correct category if you're not sure you're more than welcome to get a hold of me if I don't have a category appropriate to it I would be more than happy to make one for you Ken bundle is a brilliant option it allows you to add your products uh, to the mannequins to the sales terminals and other people to be able to do the same uh, they do not make a commission for adding it to those things that's just a, a courtesy option uh, it also allows you to add these items to the free gift boxes um, so if you want to add a gift box to give away free items you have to have Ken bundle on the items that you add to it no purchase is a good, really good idea it allows you to set your item to no, uh, no purchase on the website and when you do that you can create uh, for example you have a customer come to you and they want an exclusive item made by you they're going to pay you you know enormous amounts of NNs to do this item just for them you can set it to no purchase you would gift it to them after they pr they pay you for it but it leaves it in your catalog so that other people have the opportunity to view this item and see the quality of your work really helps with additional sales uh, risque uh, if the nipples sh on the female show and if the genitalia on either one of them show it is risque that's the bottom line um, try and have some tact if you know if if the outfit you're making just barely covers those areas it's probably a good idea to set that as risque as well you you want to try and keep it you know classy well as classy as we can get <laughs> okay uh, cost the parent cost is what the developer who created the model charges in this case Mayaka charged uh, 40 nn so her parent cost is 40 nn on this item so that's going to be my bottom line and then the submit fee is 20 nn so the total cost for this to submit it is 60 nn well I'm going to charge about the same thing because that still gives me 20 nn and then whenever it's purchased uh, I lose 10 percent on it that's fine that still gives me 18 nn out of the 20 I'm, it's not that big of a uh, cost so out of the 60 I get 18 and then my ICA gets uh, what's 40 minus 10 percent so she'd lose four so 36 and then out of it I don't mind that she gets a little more she spent several days making this I only spent an hour <laughs> um, you want to place your keywords in here those are very important for search and uh, for when people are searching for different things so gown dress long black lace ribbon uh, Boise and VB put your name in there too it does make it so that there's a better chance that the items come up with your name if it's searched um, yours are more likely to come up especially if you have a common name that can be used as another word or title or something like that um, 
product description doesn't have to be long, but it's good to put a good description in there. I'm going to put a very brief one and probably update this later. So uh, a lovely long gown for your fancy evening out. Okay, now we're going to submit this. And this will cost me 60 NN as I explained before. So if you don't want to pay the 60 NN or you don't have enough NN to do this, you will, uh, you would have chosen cancel. If you tried to submit it even though you knew you didn't have it, it would come up with an error and say you can't do that. Now, the one last thing before I let you go. Uh, update is free. So if you need to make changes to your product, click update. If you want to create a new version of this with some of the options like I showed you before where you can change the color and make multiple versions of, of it with a different color, that's a submit new. Make sure you change the title because all this information will stay. Um, so you want to make sure you change the title, make any changes in the keywords and, and description as you go along. Uh, it does make submitting multiples of the same uh, style but different colors much faster. But Submit New does charge you every time. So make sure if you're just updating the current product, it's update. If you're submitting a new version of it, you want to hit Submit New. Okay? So I hope this was helpful. And if you need more information, do check out <coughs> pardon me, the knowledge base on the website under support. Have a great day. Bye for now.